Okay, today we're gonna to be covering 10 of the most addicting summer fragrances out of my entire 1,000 plus bottle collection. And so really what I'm looking for here when putting this video together are fragrances that are captivating in one way or another. All of these are ones that I have gone back to continuously, a lot of which over the span of several years. Summer scents can be tricky because a lot of them are, are passable. They smell fine, they smell nice, nothing to write home about in a lot of instances. Not always, but sometimes. And so when it comes down to it, you end up with a lot of forgettable fragrances. You buy it, you wear it a few times, you think, yeah, that smells really good. It gets pushed towards the back of your collection and you just never think about it again. I wanted to kind of branch away from some of those and dive into some things that really do stay around in your mind and things that you do gravitate towards, or at least I do. And I'll drop links to these down below to discounters if you want to pick any of them up. And if you're on the hunt for anything rare, discontinued, or hard to find, I encourage you to sign up to my mailing list, the first link down below, and you can also send a text to the number down below to opt in for text alerts as well. Anytime something great comes into stock or anytime a big fragrance sale comes up, which is pretty often, especially now as we're kind of getting later and later into the year, you'll want to be on those lists so you have first dips. Alrighty, I want to start it off with Zerzhov Kobe. Uh, we're getting it kicked off with a more premium option here. It's got Neroli, Pettigrain, and Orange. It's a fantastic Neroli scent. Beautiful stuff. Has a nice kind of crushed up leaves, green texture to it with a little bit of a sweet, fruity balance from the orange here in particular. I love this stuff. It's unique. It has this really interesting, vibrant type of smell about it. And the, the Neroli kind of smells similar to what's used in Amouage Reflection Man. You know, that uses a ton of white florals and jasmine and other stuff, but also a good amount of Neroli. And you'll find when you smell this, it might remind you or at least make you think of something. And I think I've narrowed it down to it. It just has a similar Neroli accord that Reflection Man does. That's the only similarity. I don't want you to think that this smells exactly like Reflection Man or vice versa. Um, it, it just kind of shares that particular accord. This one goes less white floral, more sweet, more fruity, and even more green. But it smells great. I mean, I pull the cap off and smell this, and I think it smells phenomenal. One of my favorite summertime offerings from Zerzhov. Neo is up there uh, at the top of the list as well, but to be honest with you guys, I would probably have to take Kobe if I had to only choose one. Great stuff that's very addicting, great for the summertime. Next up, we have Jean-Paul Gaultier Lebo Intense. So I believe this is an Eau de Parfum Intense version here. Um, these do have a, a little bit of a different bottle style, as you can see, much wider, more angular, kind of a cool twist. It's got coconut, pineapple, and tonka bean. This is gonna be more for your summer evenings. Uh, it's on the sweeter side, sweet kind of bubble gummy, uh, modern smelling for sure. And generally, I'm not a huge fan of coconut scents, but this is one that I can really get behind and really it's just because there's a lot of balance as well. You get a little bit of that original DNA in here just with a sweet twist. And again, it kind of has a, in one way or another, a little bit of a tropical smell, which I kind of connect with summertime. I wouldn't go out there and wear this on 100 degree days when you're outdoors, but if you're inside, no problem. And again, especially for summer evenings, I think this one's fantastic. It's a little bit playful. Uh, it's something kind of uh, fun that you can wear in the evenings. It's a really nice one to have around. Uh, it is one that's oftentimes out of stock on discounters. It sells quick. Uh, each time it does pop up though, which is often, I do send out a notification. Again, text, email, you can sign up down below. We'll keep it moving with something a little bit more classy. Dior Homme Sport 2021, the latest version. And there was quite a bit of a gap. The last one was 2017. So they took some time off and they came back with this. And I think they did a phenomenal job. Now this has lemon, bergamot, aldehydes, and woods. Again, keyword classy. It's sophisticated, it's upscale, very much a gentleman's scent. Again, the complete opposite of something like Le Bole Parfum. And so this would be your go-to work scent, school scent, whatever. And when you want to smell a little bit more professional, go for this one. That citrus works great in the summertime. Very nice stuff. Next up, we have Polo Cologne Intense. Uh, so this, kind of an interesting one. It's an eau de parfum, and it's got basil, mint, and ambroxan. So, you know, looking at the bottle, Polo Green, 
very much is a green scent. Now you might think initially spring, and I would have to say that this is fantastic for the season of spring when everything is starting to green up and come to life. It's perfect. It has a little bit of that depth going on to where it kind of holds up on some cooler spring days. However, I have worn this one here lately this summer. I kind of have just been reaching for it. It's for me a change of pace because I'm always checking out the new hot releases and a lot of them don't go in this direction. This is more of a classy, more of an older school kind of gentleman scent, but this does have a modern twist on that DNA. I think it's great stuff. If you want something that's green, minty, and aromatic for summertime, look no further. Oh, and I guess one other thing I should mention, a lot of times this pops up for a really good price on discounters and even retailers will mark this one off quite a bit, so keep your eyes peeled. Next up, we have Unforgivable by Sean John, and simply put, this is Creed Milseem Imperial on the cheap. You know, you could also go for something like Armoff, Club de Nui, um, uh, Milestone, but take your pick. Whichever you can get for a better price, whichever one maybe you prefer, if you have had a chance to try both of them, it's going to be up to you. I like this one. I like... Um, the Armoff as well. It just kind of is one of those things where whichever one I get to first when I'm wanting Millicene Imperial without wearing the real thing, it's the one I pick up. Um, like most Millicene Imperial smelling scents, the performance isn't wonderful. It, nothing to write home about. Very average, but at this price point, you can spray it on heavily and reapply. It works really well in the summer heat. Next up, we have Lacoste Loam, another one that's going to be a little bit more of an interesting, kind of unique take for summer. Generally uh, marketed as a spring scent, at least in a lot of areas. And I even have said this is a great spring scent because it is. But I still work this one into my summer rotation from time to time too. It's a nice $35 scent featuring orange, rhubarb, and ginger. There's a couple different varieties of orange in here. Creamy, a little bit sweet with a kind of a spicy ginger kick. Some light woods going on. Nothing too heavy, nothing too fresh either. It strikes a nice balance. And again, this is all for when you want to change the pace. It's something that is going to stand out. It's going to give you a different wearing experience compared to your aquatics and just straight up citrus scents all the way through. You know, this one gives you a little bit of uh, variety and is a fun wearing experience in the summertime. Dunhill Century Blue is one that you hardly ever hear about, but it is one that's really good. It's a blue scent. It's using a lot of ambroxan in here, but it's also using some orange, some sea salt, and one note that I really like, iris. I believe this is one of the only, or at least one of the very, very few blue ambroxan forward fragrances that's also utilizing iris uh, to a level where you can actually pick up on it. You know, all of the other mainstream blues, iris is nowhere to be found. Outside of your blue fragrances, of course, iris is everywhere. Uh, but this is kind of a little crossover that is quite unique and that you don't see all the time. The iris is giving it a little bit of that creaminess. You're getting a lot of brightness and citrus from here. A little bit of a sparkly ambroxan, of course. That's what it's all about. It's one that you can get, again, for a good price. I think $30 to $40. It is an odd bottle size. 4.5 ounce, 135 milliliters. Strange. So price per mil works out to be really good on this one. Definitely one you should check out and it is underrated. Okay, we're going to hit up another one for summer evenings. Eros Flame by Versace. Man, this stuff is good. The more I smell it, the more it grows on me. You know, I am Eros Parfum all the way through, but for winter time. In the summertime, the only Eros that I'm going to be touching is Flame. It's got orange, vanilla, black pepper, and lemon. It's a more citrus, creamy forward version of Eros, whereas the original and the EDP and the Parfum, using that mint talk of vanilla first and foremost, this one's bringing in the citrus to provide a different type of sweetness, but it also kind of, in a way, freshens it up a little bit. Fruity, citrusy, creamy, sweet, just a nice kind of blend of a whole bunch of stuff going on. And again, I wouldn't wear this one in most summer daytime scenarios, but in the evening or inside, it's no problem. And running down to the end with Prada Loam Low, it's pretty simple. Just a fresher version of the original Prada Loam. It's got iris, neroli, ginger, powdery notes. Um, you know, it, the original Prada Loam can work great in the summertime, no problem. You know, especially inside, climate control, no issues there. But this is one that is just brightened up. It's a little bit less sweet, less powdery, even though they're listing off powdery notes. They just kind of lighten it up and make it a little bit more airy and easier to pull off when it is relatively hot outside. 
One thing's for sure, it still does have that soapy clean protolome DNA that is very versatile and works great. Again, performance-wise, it's nothing crazy. The protolomes aren't really known for that. I would say protolome intense is the best performing one, but it's a little bit heavier, sweeter with that leather and stuff. But this one does get the job done. It's a great quality product. The DNA itself is really quite unique, and you really just can't go wrong with this for any situation. And last up, we have Womo Casual Life by Ferragamo. Another affordable one. You know, if you're on a budget and you have about $35, maybe $40 laying around, you can toss it into this and get something that, for what it's worth, is kind of unique. It's got coffee, violet leaf, lemon, and of course, a little bit of ambroxan in here, the magic note. But it's great. I mean, the coffee mixes together with this blue ozonic violet leaf accord, which is very distinct, and you pick up on it immediately. Dusty sweet. Um, airy, ozonic, light, and fresh with some citrus. It's really well done. And again, it all goes back to it's something that kind of sticks in your mind. You know, the the Ferragamo Womo scents all bring something pretty decent to the table in terms of just doing things a little bit differently. You know, I've had a lot of these for a long time and they're still coming to mind when putting together videos like this. Again, I have a lot of stuff. I have a lot of cheap or more affordable fragrances, but this one is making it in and it's for a reason. It really does stick out to me. And now obviously in the winter time, I'm going for Ferragamo Womo Signature or the original Womo. But if I just want something a little bit different in the summer, this is one that I would go for. It's kind of cool because it's pulling from uh, the signature one a little bit with that coffee and just giving it to us in a summertime version. So definitely a nice flanker to have around for a low price. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. 10 of the most addicting summer fragrances out of my entire thousand plus bottle collection. I'll drop links to these down below. And again, if you want to have first dibs and you want to be the first to know about any huge fragrance sales or any great rare fragrance restocks, I'm talking all of the rare discontinued stuff that you're probably looking for all the time, get on those lists down below, text or email, or preferably both so you don't miss and you will be good to go. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.